Hello and welcome to the Scholoprogenium. Today I'm going to be talking to you about something quite exciting, which is the fact that drop pods are now a viable option again. Now, um, drop pods have been excellent for many additions uh, and they're really good. They've got a variety of uses and today I'm going to be talking through uh, some of the tactics that are now viable and how you can get the most out of using some drop pods in your army um, and some of the pitfalls uh, you want to avoid. Now, um, drop pods have been quite poor for a lot of 8th edition or all of 8th edition because they've been so expensive. Um, and this combined with the fact that you have to drop more than 9 inches away means that screening is really effective against them because even if you drop 9 inches away from the nearest unit, if you're loaded up with special weapons, often those special weapons are most effective uh, within 12-inch range, such as rapid-fire plasma weapons or melter weapons. Uh, and what this means is if a screen of uh, light infantry or something uh, expendable is uh, just a couple of inches in front of uh, a nice juicy target, such as a tank or a unit of elite infantry uh, or something like that, then you'll be unable to shoot, say, melt weapons at all or plasma at optimum rapid fire range or, say, rapid fire bolters or something like that from veterans with extra AP. And there's a variety of things, but generally you want to be within 12 inches to make a drop pod effective. And the combination of uh, having to be more than nine inches away, plus their high points value, have made, made them essentially unusable for the past couple of years. Um, and if you've only just started collecting uh, 40k, or you've only collected it since 8th edition, you probably don't have any drop pods in your collection. Uh, but, you know, exciting times, because it looks like drop pods are back on the menu. Uh, and so today I'm going to be talking you through uh, how to use drop pods. And I'll talk you through a sort of a couple of specific uses that I've found in the past couple of weeks uh, as I've been playtesting them have been quite effective. Uh, and as I said, a couple of the pitfalls you want to avoid. Um, now, before I go any further, I just want to take a moment uh, to sort of take uh, speak in solidarity with our Black Templar brothers, because um, since the Space Marine Codex has dropped, uh, the Black Templars currently don't have Crusader squads. Now, I really hope, uh, I pray to the Emperor that that changes, and when the Black Templars get a supplement, that uh, they're able to take Crusader squads again, because uh, I remember uh, still all too well the um, sort of horror of discovering that as a Blood Angels player, we could no longer use Assault Marines as troops in the, I think it was the 6th edition Codex. And so I really hope, uh, for the sake of all the Black Templars out there, that you guys get your Crusader squads back as troop choices. Because at the moment, uh, if you're not aware, Black Templars are only going to be able to use uh, normal tactical Marines instead of Crusader squads, which is uh, a big hit to them. So, you know, fingers crossed for you guys, uh, and I pray to the Emperor and Sanguinius uh, that... Uh, you guys get Crusader squads in your supplement. Uh, but anyway, back to drop pods. So, um, as usual, I'll break this video down into a couple of smaller segments, uh, and I'm going to talk um, from a Marine player perspective and a Blood Angels perspective. So I'll speak on both uh, sides of things, uh, because there are a couple of things that are beneficial to Marines um, that I really want to focus on as well as talking as a Blood Angels player which is, you know, obviously what I focus on normally in my videos, but there's a lot to talk about from both sides of the coin. So first of all, I'm going to talk about a couple of the pitfalls that you need to avoid with drop pods. Now, um, drop pods have an excellent special rule, which that is that they ignore the tactical reserves rule. Now, that not only does this mean that you can have more than 50% of your army in reserve, which is great, but it also, uh, even more significantly, means you can come in on any turn. So you can come in turn one, two, three, or even four, five, six. You can hold your drop pod off for a specific moment. And I think this clearly indicates to how you should be using drop pods. And I don't think the ability to hold off more than your army is even the significant, more than half of your army in reserve is even the significant part here. I think the significant part is that you can drop down in any turn. Um, now, the temptation here is to go, oh my god, uh, I'll get 10 drop pods and I will have all my army in reserve and I'll drop down um, and 
you know, if I'm facing off against Knights or um, something like that, or um, something that just has a lot of firepower, a big alpha strike, then they'll waste their firepower for a couple of turns. They'll never be able to destroy me. And that is, you know, of course, a big temptation. The idea is just the multitude of cheesy options that comes to mind uh, in just a moment. If you think about being able to have your entire army off the board and just drop it down specifically where you want it and uh, whenever you want to, uh, you know, I don't need to tell you um, all the sort of things that could be done with that. But uh, what I would say is it's not a good idea. And that is because um, it's too easy to block off a drop pod's deployment uh, with that nine inch barrier because you still have to be more than nine inches from an opponent's unit. Now, even a small elite unit, such as uh, army, such as custodies um, or you know a variety of other armies, will very easily, in a turn, um, just block off uh, masses of the board and really cut down on your deployment options and force you into a corner or into an area that really isn't beneficial, where you'll have little board control, and maybe you're miles away from objectives, that kind of thing. And, then, uh, and, you know, Emperor, have mercy on you if you're fighting against orcs or uh, Tyranids or Gene Stealer Cult or one of the variety of armies that can just get mass board control. Imperial Guard slash Astra Militarum with move, move, move could literally cover the board in infantry in just one turn and you wouldn't be able to deploy. You know, quite literally, they could, uh, you know, have uh, just totally block you off from bringing down 2,000 points with a drop pods because that is going to take up a lot of room uh, and you're going to need a lot of space to deploy that on the board. So you really, really want to avoid that. That is not the route to go down. So something that carries on from this point is the fact that essentially the better your opponent is, the worse drop pods are. And this has been true for many additions. If you had a drop pod, full drop pod army in a, you know, editions past and you played against someone who'd never fought against a drop pod army or a heavily um, podded up force in the, in, before, you would always just overrun them immediately because it's very, it was very difficult to handle that massive rush straight in your front lines. And the same will still be true today. If you can deep strike a lot of your units in, um, right in the enemy's face and they're not used to that and they're not um, sort of really used to screening units or trying to block off units and that kind of thing, then you'll easily uh, over your opponent and destroy them. But if you're playing against an opponent who knows what they're doing and they can see uh, how many units you've got in drop pods, they're going to very quickly uh, and easily work out how they're going to deploy and manoeuvre their forces throughout the course of the game to make sure that you can't use the, your drop pods uh, in an optimum way. And you won't be uh, getting the most out of your drop pods. You'll be exposing your forces. Uh, and essentially, when you drop down, you won't do enough damage to prevent uh, a, significant, a significant amount of return fire coming back at the forces that have deployed via drop pod, and they'll be wiped out. And this leads to feeding your army to your opponent in bite-sized chunks. And this is a... a Big risk for any deep strike heavy army um, and always has been in any edition. So let's look at the benefits and specific uh, ways you should use drop pods to maximise uh, your potential for victory in your games of 40k. Now, first of all, let's have a look at this from a, marine, a general marine player's perspective. Now, if you are a marine player, the thing that you want to keep in the forefront of your mind is how to combine this with your tactical doctrines because you can drop your drop pods down uh, with specific units with specific loadouts that will tie in to your tactical doctrines. So if you uh, take devastators and you give them plasma cannons or something, you know, anything you want and you, some kind of heavy weapon and you jump them out of the drop pod, uh, you know you want to drop them in early on because your first doctrine is the Devastator Doctrine, which would give them an additional AP minus one. And that's going to be absolutely brutal. If you drop a drop pod down, it's got 10 Devastators in, two units of five uh, with heavy weapons, uh, and they've got an additional AP minus one. That's going to really uh, tear up an opponent, especially if you're placing them directly where you want them. Um, 
Likewise, if you give them loads of uh, special weaponry, uh, that's rapid fire, then you'll be able to, such as plasma weaponry, um, and you had, say, veterans in there with plasma, combi plasma, you would be able to bring them in when you activate the t uh, tactical doctrine that gives you AP-1 on rapid fire weapons. So you're timing your drops with your tactical doctrines, and that is going to maximise your damage output when you bring your unit in, and that is going to make sure that you don't, or so, sort of, you avoid that pitfall of feeding your army to your opponent in bite-sized chunks. And um, the key thing here is that, obviously, you don't want to, as I've said, invest too many points in drop pods. You know, a couple of units timed right with the tactical doctrine will really punch into your opponent's lines and uh, turn the tide of the game in your favour. So that's the thing you want to keep in the forefront of your mind. Now, uh, the next thing I would mention is that I think veterans are the way to go with drop pods. Veterans are so, so cheap now. And uh, with their normal AP uh, benefits, and they're normally AP minus two, if you combine that with a tactical doctrine, and they're on AP minus three. So although they're only strength four, because the bolts are only strength four, and they're only damage one, AP minus three bolters, which is going to absolutely rinse through basically anything, uh, you know, even up to um, Death Guard, even though they're toughness five, so you'll be wounding them on five. So that AP minus three is going to make sure a lot of wounds go through. Uh, or sort of a lot of the wounds that you do manage to stack on them actually go through. And then they've only got that feel no pain barrier. So you will kill a decent amount of even tough infantry units. And you know those drop padding in can really clear a screen for an assault or be a really nice precision uh, killing unit, assassination unit. Um, so, you know, and I think probably veterans are where Games Workshop are taking the tactical marine model. I think that uh, over the next couple of years, probably, uh, and my opinion on this may change, but it sort of occurred to me, I've been... Ch was chatting to my mate uh, Sam recently about this and we sort of surmised that perhaps veterans are so cheap now they're only 70 points for five guys um, that uh, maybe tactical marines are eventually going to be phased out as a troop unit and all tactical marine models will essentially be considered veterans because um, the Imperium are just churning out Primaris now of course so in the law it would kind of make sense if the remaining sort of space marines who are just normal space marines, they were essentially just veterans that haven't become primaris. They're still fighting out space marines, but they've been fighting in space marines for a long time now because all the new uh, sort of Astartes are primaris. So they would be veterans. So I think that's the direction that tactical marines will be taken. And that means that, you know, Games Workshop will still be able to sell those tactical marines they like uh, selling them. Uh, they've got the Horus House, they've got loads of tactical marine uh, models that I'm sure they're reluctant to take off the line, but they'll probably just make them all veterans, perhaps, who knows, but perhaps that could be the direction they're going. And either way, veterans in drop pods for Astartes, and for Blood Angels, but for Astartes, are certainly something you want to consider. Now, how many drop pods do you want? Well, I would say no more than uh, three and probably only one or two just keep them as a little boost button and uh, something you can just drop down uh, if you think about a mario kart when you just get a little booster it allows you to just overtake uh sort of an opponent who's just ahead of you and uh, that's what this drop pod can be used for uh, you have one or two drop pods and when you see an opportune moment you just drop it down and use it to turn the tide of a certain area of the battlefield in your favour. So say you and your opponent are fighting over a couple of objectives on the battlefield or in the midfield, when maybe you've got some units on a flank fighting it out as well, you can just drop this drop pod down and turn one of those engagements in your favour. Now, as a Blood Angels player, we don't have the benefit of tactical doctrines, but this almost gives us a little bit more flexibility. Let's look on the bright side of things. Um, Drop pods are actually, in many ways, more useful to us because let's say you're facing against a, a marine opponent. And let's be honest, uh, in an ideal world, we'd always be purging heretics or slaying Xenos. But uh, a lot of opponents, a lot of people who collect Warhammer collect marines. So a decent chunk of our opponents are always going to be marine players. And at the moment in the current meta, and I'm sure this will change, but so I'm not going to focus too much on it, but in the current meta... 
at pound for pound, we are worse off than Marines because we don't have tactical doctrines, which means in a close combat situation, well, uh, we can probably hold our own because even though we don't have a, an extra AP minus one on our close combat weapons, and uh, we do have plus one to wound. But in any other situation, we are definitely losing out because we don't have the AP minus one on our heavy weapons. So our tanks, and if you take Devastators, Devastators are not as effective in the early stages of the game when the artillery duel is going off and when it's most important, your heavy weapons need to be most effective early on. And when we're, you're getting onto the mid-range infantry dueling, they will always have that extra AP minus one with their rapid fire weapons versus so tactical marine on tactical marine, intercessor on intercessor, however you look at it, they're going to uh, win that firefight gradually perhaps, but they will win it in the end. But drop pops give us the ability to um, basically get the jump on them because we're not going to fight a fair fight back and forth. They're not fighting a fair fight with us. Uh, so you can keep maybe, uh, you know, have a couple of drop pods and have your um, infantry units in those drop pods. So you're not using them as a precision drop down uh, punch into your opponent's lines. But what you are doing is you're going to hold your infantry off um, until you see a point at which you think they're going to be able to safely take an objective and hold it. And then you'll drop them down on that objective, perhaps after your elite units have uh, formed a blockade, uh, or it just depends on the battle, but you can just more safely and in the later game deploy your tactical units onto the field. As you, and also, if it means that, let's say, you want to fight infantry on infantry, then you will be guaranteed to get the jump on them because you will be able to drop down and shoot at them before they get the chance to shoot at you and even the odds a little bit. So it just, and, and that will change because when the Blood Angels get their codex, I'm sure we'll get some buffs. So I hope we get some buffs, which brings us in line with uh, the power of current Space Marines. So that's all I'm going to say on that. But at the moment, it can help you even the odds against general Space Marine infantry. Now, um, as a Blood Angels player, and this sort of goes for any Astartes player, but as a Blood Angels player, I would certainly say that you uh, want to keep your drop pods cheap and not get carried away. I've already you know, said in detail why you don't want to go en masse with your drop pods, but I also would say you don't spend too much on the contents of your drop pods either. You see, uh, drop pods, as I've mentioned, they have the big risk of feeding your units to your opponent in bite-sized chunks. If you drop down and you don't do enough damage uh, and you've spent a lot of points on that unit, but your opponent's a good opponent, they've managed to effectively screen you out and really uh, reduce your drop-down option, uh, your deployment options with that drop pod uh, and really sort of block you off from any really ideal, juicy, optimum targets. And essentially, you're going to be frustrated throughout the game because you're going to think, well... If I drop them down now, I can only target units that aren't really ideal uh, and then my opponent can just focus their fire on my drop pod unit and wipe out, wipe them out and that's a lot of points wasted and I haven't got my points back. Or likewise, I keep them off and keep waiting for the opportune moment um, but every turn that they're off, they're not adding to your firepower and that's a big chunk of points off the board that you're not using and they're not helping you so it puts you in a really difficult position. If you keep the contents of your drop pods cheap and you maybe only have two drop pods or just one drop pod in your army, and I've actually had the most success with just one drop pod, and I'll go into that in more detail in a moment. If you just have one drop pod with some relatively cheap contents, um, a couple of units of veterans or a couple of units of assault marines with a double special weapon, because that's the benefit of assault marines, you can take double special weapon um, and still keep the unit quite cheap, um, then you've got some punch there you can uh, take out one unit effectively when it becomes exposed um, and if you're going against a sub optimum unit it's not that um, you know it's not that bad if that makes sense you can drop it down somewhere that's not ideal um, and make sure that the odds are in your favor and if the guys are going to and make sure that the guys are probably going to survive that engagement and then move them off to carry on being effective in the later stage of the battlefield now. Okay. So, you know, say for example, your opponents just got, um, they're attacking your back lines or attacking your flank with the unit and you've got, you know, a decent amount 
of units, you'll probably be able to hold your own um, and defend your units, but it's going to really slow you down. It's going to corner you in and corral you and uh, stop you from pushing forward onto the midfield. It's going to really, you know, hamper your units and tie you down. Uh, then what you can do is you can drop that drop pod in, you know, punch out one unit. Um, say if you had two units of five assault marines with two melters each, that's four melter shots. You know, you can kill kill off something decent with that quite easily. And, um, you know, then those units can then move on. They can run up to the midfield and they can get stuck in some other fights. And that's something that your opponent has to deal with. And they're quite cheap. So your opponent will be relatively relatively reluctant to dedicate too much firepower to killing them off. But if he doesn't kill them off, you know, you've still got your melter running around or plasma or whatever special weapon you choose to put in there. So, you know, having a nice cheap drop-down unit um, means that you're not too committed. Uh, and if you do drop them out and just think, right, I really need to punch that unit or I really need to uh, get some, get some kill a certain unit off, um, and I know that this unit is going to die, then, you know, hey, it's a sacrificial unit. And something else to remember is you'll probably have a big unit of death company uh, or a big scary drop down unit, a big unit of sanguinary guard or quite possibly both. And if you're dropping down a big unit of sanguinary guard and a big unit of death company and a couple of characters are moving up to support those guys, dropping one cheeky little drop pod in somewhere else on the battlefield is going to go somewhat unnoticed. Your opponent is going to really have to dedicate all of their firepower and essentially uh, thought towards and a lot of their resources towards taking out all those elite units before they get absolutely overrun so your drop pod's going to be able to do what it wants to do and the contents are probably going to survive and that's the brilliant thing about a cheap if unit in a drop pod is if you've got just a couple of special weapons in there and um, then if they're not totally wiped out, those special weapons really start getting their points back and really start doing damage to your opponent and they really start regretting not finishing them, them off. They become a thorn in your opponent's side. Uh, so timing it with your big assault, having one little cheeky drop head in there is a really viable tactic, something I've found really useful. It also means that you're not committing too much of your army's build and sort of strategy and grand strategy towards this big drop pod um, assault because as I mentioned if you're playing against a good opponent they will be able to blunt um, the effectiveness of a drop pod assault quite easily and if you've spent a lot of points on drop pods and the contents of those drop pods there's a good chance you've built the rest of your forces around supporting this drop pod assault so if that drop pod assault gets blunted your entire army your entire strategy is on the back foot and you're playing fighting an uphill battle for the rest of the game but just having one cheeky drop pod or maybe two cheeky drop pods is just options to drop down on your opponent when the time is right or in your back lines to support yourself or in the midfield to just reinforce a centre objective or, you know, all the variety of places you can just drop one cheeky drop pod. Um, you know, that's going to be really effective and your army isn't built around that. You can have whatever strategy you want in your army. You can have whatever grand strategy, whatever overarching theme, whether it's, um, mass assault or you know loads of infantry or uh, you know loads of basic infantry or loads of uh, elite infantry or you know uh, armored company or whatever you've got that cheeky drop pod is never going to go amiss and those are uh, and that's the other thing about having two cheap ish units and uh, with just a couple of special weapons in each is the fact that you know they're never going to be ineffective when they're supporting other units you know you're always they're always going to be welcome to the party whenever they turn up you're going to be like great that's great and your opponent's always going to be like god damn it that's not what i needed right now you want to sort of place these guys in a place where your opponent really could do without them turning up right there so often in every battle you play you'll have certain engagements, a certain flank or midfield sort of showdown where you're, you're putting in resources and your opponent's dedicating resources to having a, a fight. And it's you know quite balanced. And timing that drop pod to go in there, just when your opponent doesn't need that drop pod to go in there, is sort of the art of drop podding in a, in a sense. It's timing it so that um, it tips the balance in your favour, as I mentioned, and acts as that little boost button that just lets you overtake your opponent, put them on the back foot and put you uh, 
to an advantage in the game, in a sense. Um, the other thing about having just a single drop pod or maybe two drop pods at the most with a couple of cheapish uh, special weapon carrying units is that, as I said, a good opponent uh, will be able to block off a lot of drop pods, but just one drop pod, well, turn one, yeah, he's going to be able to deploy his forces so you can't really get a good jump on him, but you don't care because you've not spent that many points on the drop pod. You're not missing those points that much. You've got plenty of uh, other units you can play with and use. But eventually, he is going to make a mistake. Eventually, you're going to kill down enough of his units, or he's not going to screen enough, and you're going to be able to... He's going to forget that you've got bolters on your death company that can rapid fire in and clear out a screen. And you'll time your drop pod to go in there and to, you know shoot past that screen or and kill off a, an enemy character or something like that. You can just wait for your opponent to slip up and because you've just got that one drop pod with a decent amount of firepower just enough to give your opponent a headache just enough to be a real thorn in your opponent's side when it drops down and very cheaply then you just wait for that tank to be exposed you just wait for that knight to just be a little bit on its own because it's trying to cling on to a backline objective you just wait for your anti you know heavily damaged you just wait for your moment and you just drop that drop pod down and you just turn the tide of the battle in your favour. So, essentially, drop pod tactics are about reinforcing your units and just um, helping an already existing engagement. Not starting a new engagement, but helping something that's boosting something that's already going on on the battlefield. It wants to be a precision drop that you're thinking about and thinking, right, what can these guys do? They need to either do enough damage when they drop down that it doesn't matter if they die or uh, be dropped down in a place where that initial punch uh, is going to be you know a useful boost to your existing forces and you've already got enough going on in that area of the battlefield that these guys aren't going to be killed by your opponents they can carry on moving up and be uh, a threat in the later game you need to wait for a juicy target to be exposed and you want to keep the unit inside cheap and that's sort of the last thing I'll talk about, because that's basically the summary there. I would give maybe two out of five guys special weapons, because uh, that means that you've still got uh, DACA to just take, a, take on uh, cheap infantry. So if you end up shooting against a screen unit, then just your normal DACA is good enough and you've not spent loads of points um, for nothing. But you've got enough special weapons that if you drop down against something juicy or expensive you can do enough damage to it to blow it up or be a significant threat to it, give it a significant wallop uh, and, and sort of hopefully survive any return fire. Um, so, you know, I've been using most successfully two units of five assault marines, each with two Maldrin, and that's it, no additional upgrades. And I found that the chain swords on the three guys um, with the, who don't have the Melter just keep mean that if the opponent counter-assaults them, or if I can drop down within nine inches and they can get one of those units into combat. They can often help in two phases of the uh, of the of that turn because they can drop down, they can wallop something that's maybe running in to support um, an engagement. So say I, I, a lot of the time I found if I'm fighting over an objective and my opponent's running something and I can see it coming towards that objective, it's not currently involved but it will be next turn. They're bringing it up to support. I kind of intercept it with my drop pod and I drop it down in such a way that I can shoot off at that thing that's not in the combat or not closely engaged, hopefully get my Solomons into cover so they can survive the return fire. I've still got four melters there, two from each squad, um, and they can carry on fighting and get further involved and really turn the tide in my favour. And they can potentially, if I need to, charge in and get a lucky charge off with at least one of the units, which is just a few more attacks and with that plus one to wound can really help depending on the target. Um, but that's sort of the amount of points you're going to be spending, maybe around 90 points-ish, no more than 90 points, I would say, uh, to 100 points per unit in the drop pod. You don't want that drop pod and its contents to come to more than about 250, 260 points. Any more than that, and it's too great an investment, but about 200 to 250 points in a 2,000-point game, you know, that's, a, that's nice and cheap. It can do some decent punch. Uh, it can certainly take down more than 200 points uh, worth of your opponent's units in, its, uh, in, in 
a round or two uh, if it's well placed. And, um, you know, it's not going to be missed for a couple of turns if you decide to bring it down turn three. Um, so that's drop pods uh, in a nutshell. Now, I'm sure there's loads more tactics that we're going to develop over time because these rules are relatively new. Uh, but for now, hopefully uh, that inspires you. And if you already own drop pods and they've been gathering dust for a couple of years, you know, dust a couple of, couple of them off, uh, write up a couple of units that you can put in them, put them in your list and uh, try them out. And then please do leave a comment below and let me find out what loadouts you find are best. And if you've got any ideas for uh, good, uh, good content for drop pods, good tactics uh, good, or good unit combinations, then again, please do leave a comment below because it, um, you know, that's really helpful to me and to other people who watch these videos and read the comments. I hope you found this video entertaining. I hope you found it interesting. This has been the Scholar Progenium. Thank you very much for your time. Goodbye.